Welcome. My name is David Wiss, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition in Recovery. Today we're going to talk about the Disordered Eating Food Addiction Nutrition Guide, aka DFANG. The paper we're going to discuss and review today was published in November 2016. It was written because the concept of food addiction has been difficult to integrate into the scope of eating disorder treatment. There is no well-accepted treatment model for food addiction. We do know that eating disorders should be treated on an individual basis. Thus, the DFANG is presented as a tool to frame individualized treatment goals, particularly when there's addictive symptomatology. This confusion around food addiction and the confusion around contemporary westernized food may be contributing to poor treatment outcomes in eating disorders. Traditionally, nutrition has been framed as all foods fit, everything in moderation, but this term moderation is quite subjective, does remain poorly defined, and this recent study showed that people's definition of moderation actually match their consumption patterns. So moderation is definitely a goal for a lot of people in eating disorder treatment, but it can be confusing for many people. Anorexia nervosa is the least likely to resemble an addiction. Those with restrictive type are able to consistently abstain. They're less likely to show cravings and may not experience impaired behavioral control. Whereas those with bulimia nervosa resemble an addiction in many cases because of their altered reward sensitivity. This dopaminergic brain system that is changed through eating disorder behaviors may lend itself to increased addictive potential around food. This study from 2012 made this point very clear. Authors suggested that those with bulimia nervosa should be separated into two distinct subtypes. One that's hypo-responsive to reward, much more similar to an anorexic nervosa patient, and the other which is hyper-responsive to reward, reflecting two distinct disease states. Binge eating disorder is the most likely to resemble an addiction. There's plenty of overlap in shared mechanisms such as reward dysfunction, craving, emotion dysregulation, and impulsivity. This elegant review paper looked at these shared and unique mechanisms, and the authors have several future directions to consider um, evaluating whether current treatment for addictive disorders can be useful for food addiction and food-related disorders, exploring whether or not this can relate to eating disorders, and exploring whether or not this can relate to obesity and other compulsive patterns of food consumption. So when we're talking about food addiction, it's not the same as anorexia nervosa treatment because it is in many ways about the food. It's about specific neurobiological factors. Therefore, looking at the nutrition and the exercise will be a very important part of treatment. We need to look not just at nutritional quantity, but start looking at nutritional quality, particularly when hedonic mechanisms appear to override homeostatic mechanisms. So this is the DFANG model. You can see on the bottom half, we have AN, which represents anorexia nervosa. This bottom half of the model is classic eating disorder treatment, where it's not about the food so much. Um, of course, it doesn't mean that the food's not important. It's just not the big picture treatment goal once you restore uh, weight status. Uh, whereas the top half of the model looks at food addiction treatment, where it is more biological and more so about the food. Uh, nutrition and exercise are very important components of the treatment program because we're trying to address the biology of addiction as opposed to just the psychology of eating disorders. So with food addiction, it is more about the food, meaning we have to look at stabilizing the body by healing the gut, uh, stabilizing hormones, uh, beginning to heal the dysfunctional brain circuitry that we know is persistent with addictive disorders. The case study in the DFANG paper looked at an individual with a history of drug addiction, uh, family addictive disorders galore, has tried moderation, has tried classic eating disorder treatment, and has failed. Uh, so we plotted this patient on the upper half of the model 
closer to the left, meaning uh, more like uh, binge eating disorder than bulimia nervosa. And we are able to frame a nutritional treatment goal that is compatible with her relative orientation on the DFANG model. The conclusion is that eating disorder should be individualized. All patients that enter eating disorder treatment shouldn't receive the same food and the same generic nutrition education. We need to start looking at how important the food is when dealing with patients that have food addiction because with food addiction, the food is a primary part of treatment.